Hello, this is Max Drake. I'd like to talk to you about the PWA Progressive Web Apps. Um, I've been doing some tutorials exploring them for the last couple of weeks and I've been thinking about them for a while, um, about what you can and can't do with them and just understanding what they are. Now, I've been in, in doing uh, a lot of low-code or no-code um, uh, playing around with apps, and I've been, the Glide apps one is brilliant for what it does. I've got this one uh, that I've used for about a year and a half, and I use it just to manage my finances. Um, uh, so I actually have a, a spent page here where um, I've got a list of things to do. I put in an amount of sum, and then I choose, and I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible so that I've got a lot of the people where I shop with, if they're not on my list I can actually add somebody into that just add another place that I might unusually go and then basically a lot of the things are based on categories and stuff and just pull down lists to speed down the whole process so you're not doing a massive amount of typing because I find typing on uh, mobile phones quite hard they're kind of small and uh, I don't even need a date as soon as I actually click on that it will actually put in today's date at this point in time I've got an overview dashboard that gives me indications so this is just a chart that's just um, uh, showing me where I am, uh, what has been paid, yet to be paid, and things like that. And then on each specific item that I've got on my forecast things, so I can see whether it's been paid or whether it hasn't been paid. And if it's suddenly been paid, I can come through here, change the switch, and actually have that modified onto the thing. So overall, it's a, it's it's um, a, able to change itself as it needs to go through. So it's a good heads up, and I have actually found the app quite good. Again, that if you're just using this as an example, this is a um, basically going over a web page and actually getting this information through here. Now you can view this because it's a, a web page. You can view it on an Apple device. You can view it on an Android device, or you can view it as in, in here on uh, a PC in, in Windows 10. So it's quite a, a powerful thing. Um, so let's just look and see what um, so when I was looking at progressive web apps we kind of say well what does it do so I've got a bit of code here which is from uh, so wait a moment just go back to there so I've been watching some tutorials and this the net ninjas tutorials on progressive web apps it's absolutely brilliant it takes you step by step and he sort of does it slightly the, in, in, in a longer way just so that you have a good understanding of all of the components that it needs to be and what it means to be a progressive web app. And it's very, very good. There's another series of tutorials by um, uh, Jad Shawbran, and his one starts talking about this tool called Workbox that is actually a JavaScript library for adding offline supports to the apps. Now, I'll explain that shortly, but I just really wanted to give you this overview. Now, Inside the Net Ninja one, he's actually got a branch of all of the code that he's got as he's gone through his tutorials each of the time. So I've taken that information through there and I've been trying to build a progressive web app. So I've taken his tutorials and I've I've started to use it through here. No, sorry, I've got to go to the index page and I'm just going to open that in live server and I'm going to grab that through there and I'm just going to do it into the... Um, I'm going to do this in Chrome because I'm sort of a lot of the tutorials seem to be working doing stuff in Chrome. So this one can do this. So here in Chrome, you can actually see with the dev course. So for the dev tools, you go Control Shift I inside Chrome, and you can show it what it looked like on a desktop or what it looked like on there, and then you can choose different uh, phone size. So that's an iPhone or an iPhone 6M. So that's what it's looking like on all of this. So this is the this is the app as it, it comes through. So I've actually just taken his um, recipe app and I've modified it to actually um, uh, display uh, uh, my expenses that coming through. So this is hooked up at the back end to a Firebase Firestore um, database. So I've actually got some bits of information through here. So it's pulling that data out of there. So what does a progressive web app do? Well, let's just do a little bit of an example through here. So here's what actually happens. So this is a web page that we're looking at. We're just going through and looking at a web page. Now this is actually just on a, on a local host. Now if I go offline, so I'm just going to go into the network and I'm going to go offline. And now if I refresh this page, normally you'd just get a blank page, which was suddenly saying there's nothing to show. So if I'd just gone to maybe, um, uh, what can we go to? 
um, web stuff. Let's just find something through there, and who knows what that is. That's through, through there. Now, if I go onto this, Control Shift and I onto that one there, and I go to the network and I go offline there, and I go and refresh that, it's just saying no internet. So why isn't that one doing it? What it's actually doing, the modern browsers, and what they've actually designed the modern browsers to do, is to actually store, cache some of your um, files inside the browser. So it's caching the, it's caching the um, files. So it's the first time it goes and opens it up, it goes across the network and, and, and opens up those fronts, those files, and actually displays what it needs to. But it also makes a copy and stores them on your um, inside your browser. The other thing as well that it does, now look at what's actually happening. So at this point in time, I'm still offline. But look at this. I'm going to delete this one here. Now if I do a refresh, it's gone. Now I'm going to also go and add one. So I'm going to add one, which is 545454545454545. And I'm just going to add some information on here. And I'm going to go add expense. If I come back to here, you see that one's there as well. Now, if I go to my database and I look at that, because I'm offline, it's not in my database. But if I go back online again, and then I go back to my database, five, four, whoops, where are we? Five four five four five four five four, and the one I've deleted has also gone as well. So I don't even have to refresh my page; it's actually just gone through and uh, updated my database. So my database has talked to my page as soon as it's come back online and sucked down the uh, the modifications. So the one that I deleted and done here. If we look up here, this one's saying, "Oh, I can't get any of these things over my uh, over the network." But look, I've got some inside of my ones here. So it's actually going to the memory cache to actually get some of those ones. So it has this thing called a service network. Sorry, a, a, a service workers which tells you where to go to get the information. So it says, first off, go to the network. So if you've actually got an app, or you can say, go to the cache first. So it's like your, your standard web setup isn't going to change that much. So once you've actually got it set up, you can actually just use your cache for that app every time you do there. You say, instead of going over the network, just grab the stuff from my, my phone. So this is where these can run almost as fast as a native app. Now, what's a native app? A native app is something that you've written uh, inside Android to run an Android app on an Android phone. So it might use Go or some other uh, programming language which is specific for running on Android that will do that. Then if I want one for um, Apple, I'd write a special Apple. I think they use Swift or something. It's another one or Flutter. Or, there's all of these different ones. But it would be specific to an Android phone. And because it's actually sitting on the phone itself, all the programs on there, it's actually just reading the files locally so it can go very fast. So this is what this is doing. It's reading the files locally. Um, but let's just go through and do another thing here. So we're going to go into the service worker and we're going to go offline. So we're still offline here. And I'm going to try and open a page about... Oh, sorry, I've actually already got that up there. So I'm going to open contact. And it says, oops, currently you can't view this page without a connection. So it set, tells you you haven't got any information like that. But if I go online now and I go and I go to contact, it will pull that information down. Now if I go back to home page again, sorry, back to home page, and now if I go offline, now if I click on that again and go contact, that information is there because it's now storing the about and the contact inside the cache. It's also storing a copy of part of the Firebase store which is actually loaded up when it comes through. It's not going to necessarily have all of it. Like if you're only saying, show me the first 10 items, it's only going to bring out the first 10 items. So you've got to be a bit careful. So it's actually storing this stuff in here. Now, what you can actually say is you can say, 
I want the latest weather report. In which case, the first thing you want it to do, and this is where the service workers have these rules that say, go onto the network and go and get me the latest weather. And if you can't find it, or, or if I'm not online, then serve me up what's in the cache. And the cache will say, this is the weather, but it's four days old. And so you're aware that you've got something to be shown, but it's just not particularly useful. So this is the way that it can have this service workers stand between the network and your um, actual app itself. And then, to, to, and, and then you can create rules of where it goes to get the data and what it's to do with the data if you're online. So what this means there is that you can open up a web page and have functionality on a web page, which is just as fast as a native app. But you don't actually have to use specific coding for Androids or specific coding for Windows or specific coding for um, uh, iOS. You just write a web app. So that's seriously powerful, in my opinion. So um, this is what it actually gives you. It gives you the speed of a native app, but it's not giving you and it's also refreshing the data as the way that you want it when it's online or offline and the other one that you can actually do is you can say give me what we got in the cache at the moment but go to the network and get the latest stuff and then bring it and update what i've got on there so you're always getting information so your apps are always working the other thing that you can do is after you've actually got your app you can actually do um this is that you can actually save your app to the desktop so um, on this one here, uh, these are two that I started to play around with. And these are actually my uh, websites. And I actually found, and this one here is App Info. So it's not actually, this is not the Chrome browser. If I go Control Shift I, you see the development tools open in another page because this is actually seen as an actual app page. So when you've actually got your mobile phone, unfortunately my mobile phone is a bit sluggish and a bit old and, and uh, a bit cussed. But basically, so and, and also I found it difficult um, uh, trying to web, uh, the, sorry, cast a screen. So it got very slow and sluggish, especially with the videos working. But you can actually bring in apps onto your phone so that you can actually have a, a, an app image and it'll install onto your phone and it'll actually act like an app, like a native app. But basically, it's just a web page link that you've actually got, but now allows you to actually store some of the information off site. So therefore, it can actually react a lot quick, more quickly. Now, on my phone is an older phone and uh, say so it's about two, two and a half years old, and it's actually a bit sluggish. If I don't actually have uh, Firefox open and minimized, when I open these up, a lot of the times, all I get is a blank. So I need to investigate this a bit more. If I have got the, the Firefox open and minimized, this eventually opens up. So another thing I just want to talk about here is in fact, um, I suddenly thought, well, uh, I've got a whole load of web pages. Uh, oh, sorry, I've got a load of websites which are in WordPress. And I actually found that there's this super progressive web app um, plugin that you can do, which will actually turn your websites into progressive web apps. And here they are. So those are the ones that I actually have on my thing now. So therefore, they can store some of the information onto um, my, my browser storage area instead of using the other one. So that's really brilliant. And when you go through here, one of the things which I did find when I was setting this one up, a lot of them, and they all have these odd image size, you've got to have 192 by 192 and a 512 by 512 pixel size snowballs, and they need to be PNGs. The first time I did this, I actually ended up with J, uh, uh, JPEGs and they just wouldn't work at all. No image came up and they were just acting really weird. All I got was this background color and uh, the application short name is what's shown on the icon. And when you actually open the app, you get shown the, the full application name. Now you need a manifest file and you need a service worker, but this actually builds them all themselves. But what I was finding is I was having trouble with the, making these apps, uh, making these image sizes until um, what I've actually got 
is um, this tool called Power Toys. So that's a free app from Microsoft, um, and it can do color pillar, it can do fancy zones where you can fit, fit your screen if you've got a formatted with five or six different um, programs open and set up in a certain way, you can memorize those. But it's got an image resizer. So I've actually set one to 194 by 194 and the medium to 512 by 512. So when I actually found out I actually had some images, and I'm just going to go and delete these to here um, what I can now do with that delete uh, is that I can take an image and if I got my power apps uh, power toys open uh, you can I can just go resize picture and I'll resize it as small the 194 by 194 resize and immediately I get the PNG that I want and it makes a copy of it and then I can resize the picture again and I want to make that the medium one so I'll resize that one so if I just go in and hover over that one uh, you'll see down here on the bottom right uh, there's a 194 by 194 and the medium is a oh is a 512 by 512 um, PNG so it actually does have the image sizes that I want um, so uh, that was a handy thing to actually be able to use. So that sped up some of my processes through there um, for the sizes you want. So if you actually have those specific sizes, I was go going on there into Wongle and trying to find some things, but it was frustrating me and I was in a little bit of a hurry. So that's been a handy app to actually be able to do that. So one of the things I'm actually playing inside, although I'm a Firefox sort of a fan, I'm actually using Google Chrome because it actually has another really cool tool here. Called Lighthouse and what that does is it basically does an audit of your progressive web app to see whether it meets a lot of the rules and also how the performances go I'm still offline here <laughs> oops I've got to go back to that one again um, where was I um, if we go into network I'm offline so I've actually got to go back online again for it to actually do the exercise so now if I go back into that lighthouse then again and uh, what's happened there I might actually just have to copy that and go and put it onto a new page and then go control shift I and go lighthouse and go generate a report and it comes through and starts selling you how it's performing so the performance is quite low but if I just click on the performance it says what I can do to actually speed up so what it's saying is saying the first colorful paint is taking me 3.9 seconds I can save uh, estimated saving two and a half seconds if I enable text text compression so minify a lot of my files so um, there's a whole load of other things I can do so these are ways that I can actually do to start speeding up my site but it actually gives you some guidances on some of those now the other tool that um, I just want to mention here uh, which he was mentioning through here which was this workbox this tool here you need no to actually go and load it up and stuff like that but what that allows you to do is to start making a lot of the rules about how you serve your application and you know uh, uh, you, you know which ones you've got your static sites but you also may actually have your um, dynamic sites so if you're going into adding some other things about or something like that that's your uh, dynamic sites that are coming through there so it's saying how you split it so which ones it's going to read first because once you've actually got your interface you're not going to change that too much so that one you actually just want to read from cache because then it's just reading straight away from the phone if it needs to go and get something over the network it'll pull it in later and maybe that needs to be cleaned because maybe you're pulling down four or five web pages you've read them you don't need to read them again so that could get tossed so you're suddenly saying each time go through and find these other things that you need so you can choose your hierarchy of how you do that and writing the service workers can be a little bit uh, complicated but you can actually use this way as a methodology to actually do that there so there's some really exciting stuff to do again at this point in time I actually haven't really been delving into getting my performance up. I've just been trying to get something to work. So it's really exciting. Now, the positives and the negatives. The positives from this point of view is you're just writing everything for free. So um, uh, you've got access to 
uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, can just write all of those. You know, this one's using a back-end database, but the Firebase database, you can actually get uh, free um, tiers for some of this, so that's quite easy to use through there. The thing with um, uh, the, the Glide app, it's a phenomenal tool, but it has its limitations on the free stuff because obviously they want you to actually go and uh, go pro. So this one here, you've got 500 rows of stuff. Honeycode, you've got 20 users and you can't access any of their other things through there. You can't access any of their other AWS stuff. You've got to be in the pro or the premium account to be able to get um, uh, uh, API calls across to something like um, uh, their EC2s or something like that. Whereas with this, you can actually go and use, sorry, with um, uh, this thing here with uh, the whole code because you're totally open, you can go and use the AWS services and pull it into your app as it is. So there's some real, real power with this. The pain point though is that you actually have to code. <laughs> so that's the nasty stuff. Now the HTML is reasonably okay. Um, CSS, there's been some new stuff in there that's quite way over my head. Um, but there's some good stuff in there as well. And uh, But the JavaScript just gives me pain. On this one here, I've been trying to actually do a date issue and uh, in the, it's in the DB, um, trying to get the right date to come through. Um, and inside the the thing, I've been messing around doing a whole lot of console logs just trying to get a date format because this is a string, so it's bringing back an object. It's not bringing back a date object, it's bringing back an object which is of a certain sort. Then I've actually got to convert it into a date and then I can convert it into a string. But in the database, instead of actually being uh, stored as a date, it's actually stored as a number. And it's not stored as a timestamp, which would actually give me my date and my time. So I've, that's taken me quite a few hours just to get this to actually operate so that when I'm actually inside my app and uh, I'm on the home page, I can actually get a proper date looking thing through here. So that has been quite agonizing and quite painful. Um, and, and so that's four or five hours of me researching something and I'm basically copying somebody's codes and just tweaking it a bit and I haven't got pull downs or anything through here yet so this is an app that's going to evolve um, but it works and, and I've got it to work another little funny thing that I've got on that app at the moment um, which is if I go and add another one if I add 56.1 and I go and push that in says please enter a valid value um, because this is trying to write HTML and HTML is only seeing a number. Now there is a way of actually getting uh, it to a couple of decimal places if I want to do that but at the moment I haven't got that so it won't actually do it. It suddenly says no you can't do that. It will allow that to actually happen. So that one if we come back you'll find that we now have the 56 but it, where we haven't got the the tw this was one that I actually manually put in the database earlier on. So, um, uh, and again, another thing that I've just deleted something, I've got to actually do a refresh to actually make that go away at this point in time. But it is evolving. Another thing that happens is that this push button gets pushed to the point, but it's quite easy that I can actually go into the code and I can actually say, no, that button is right at the bottom. I think, where's the button? Somewhere at the bottom of the input class. Um, so sorry, no, that was another thing that I actually found on the app, but it's allowed to, when I was doing this, when I came through the phone, this button was down the bottom. But when I scrolled down on my phone, I wasn't able to access that button, but I now moved the button to the top and now I can access it really easy. So I can actually fill in the information that I want, come to the top again. So on the mobile phone that works. So I can actually do those sorts of tweaks um, and, and do the adjustment that I actually need to, to get those things to work. So in some ways you've got a lot more flexibility, but then you're spending an awful lot of time on doing some things. So again, you know, part of the aesthetics on this is using the... Um, uh, uh, the other thing that I actually did notice with this 
is that when you actually download somebody, and I've actually downloaded a progressive web app, which is a Sudoku page, so I thought was really cool. But one of the things that I actually want to go and look at on that is to go and see if I can actually find some of its code, which is now down in my browser, such that I can actually copy and see how, and, and actually go and play with it to see how they actually built that. So from the point of view of if you're using progressive web apps, you can do a little bit of learning through that as well. So I thought that was quite interesting. And also some of the ways that it's actually pushing them and using the JavaScript, because this is the, 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 the challenges that I actually have some of the time. Well, actually, most of the time it's JavaScript. So um, it's got some real potential, but it's going to be very painful for me because of all the JavaScript that it is actually writing, uh, that I'll need to be writing. And, and I do just get find... Um, unless I can find similar templates and, and actually tweak them, um, uh, they will be hard to use. Now, the other thing, because they're offline, in fact, this has almost come full circle because one of the um, uh, tools that I actually saw, which I can see this being quite handy for me from a facilities management point of view, is that I can actually go and assess a building and I don't need to be offline. So therefore, I can go to a different district. I can have downloaded some information on that building rates, assets, or the conditions of a lot of its things in there, like the walls and finishes and things like that. I can go and update those. And when I get to um, an internet connection, it will then go and update the database to allow those things to happen. So um, it's, it's allowing a lot more freedom and you're not having to write something specifically for Android or specifically for um, uh, uh, iOS. There's actually a lot more accessible for a lot of people. So I think it's a very exciting place to be at this point in time. Um, I just um, uh, will need to do an awful lot of learning to actually um, do this. So I hope that's been of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching. If you found it useful, can you give a thumbs up? If not, ot panyaha. Uh, and also, thanks very much for Matt Floyd for becoming a, a patron. I think he's up there somewhere. <laughs> um, uh, so, yes, thank you very much.